excited about this video today, as you can tell by my tone of voice. Uh, so, anyone who's like a big Kills Watch Engage fan from, you know, the earlier days, I guess we could say, you know, 2003-ish onwards, would recognize a guitar that Joel used all the time. We're talking about the guitar from the World of Blaze DVD. Around 2002 or 2003, Joel started playing uh, Comparison, and he had a, a Dellinger model. And um, we've all seen it on the DVD. Um, he played, I think he toured it from 2003 until 2006. I think he made it onto tours on even 2008. Um, but I don't think he played very much. I think it was his, his backup. But if you were to watch like the Guitar Messenger video where him and Adam are playing some riffs, he's holding this guitar. Um, it's a guitar that Comparison never produced for people to buy. It was a custom shop kind of thing. And um, I've always wanted to like recreate it, but never had um, the means or the time or whatever. But now um, I've decided I'm going to go for it. So it's a all mahogany Dellinger uh, humbucker single single. It's got a Wilkinson tremolo and yeah. So um, the way I'm going to be building it is I'm going to be giving this guitar to a luthier who is going to basically clone it. Uh, we're going to put this neck on it. The body will be made by him. It will be all mahogany. It will be cut for the correct pickups and the correct everything. And then we're going to put the parts on it. One thing you can notice on Joel's guitar, the huge buttons on the tuners, the part that you turn... Um, and that they're satin chrome, they're not shiny. You couldn't get the exact ones. Um, very, very hard to find right now, especially in a two and four configuration, you know. But Hip Shop makes ones that look a lot like it, and they come in satin chrome. The only thing is, the buttons are uh, special order, and they're the only buttons that they sell that are not available in the satin chrome or honed chrome. So I have brought those to a local uh, powder coat place. Hopefully that's gonna be done and okay, but they have them right now. Uh, so those will be put on. Back then, the, these Dellingers had gloss um, headstocks. We're not gonna be able to do that. But yeah, we're gonna have the, uh, you know, it's gonna have all the features. The, the Luthier is gonna try to copy it as much as possible. We're using all the same neck bolts and neck furls. We might use this if it'll fit with the whole tremolo cavity thing. Uh, what else? We're going to obviously do the uh, Dellinger input jack location right here. Um, but everything, yeah, so it's all it's all going to be as close as we can. And uh, so I'll show you the parts I've got already. Chrome, Schaller strap box, EMG 85 and two SAs. Uh, currently in the mail still is the Chrome uh, Goto volume knob. The medium height EMG pickup ring. This is not uh, curved or uh, tapered at all. It is just the same height. The guy who currently owns Joel's guitar um, was kind enough to send me pictures, but um, I was able to like, get details like this down, uh, you know, to the millimeter. So this is the correct height for that. And the Wilkinson VS100 tremolo. Now the cool thing about this is when you buy it, it comes with the coned chrome saddle. So it's all chrome. You can buy all chrome or all black. Um, as you can see with this picture of Joel's, this is Joel's actual guitar. He replaced it with either black Wilkinson saddles or um, Graftech string saver saddles that are black, which is what I did. Um, when you buy this bridge, regardless of which color you get, the little locking uh, intonation screws they're all like little black um, hex key, bolt, like Allen wrench bolts, you know. Um, and as you can see on Joel's, it's a, a silver Phillips screw. So that was a quick little trip to the hardware store and, uh, you know, accuracy. So we're, we're, we're really close with all that stuff. So um, the trim will be blocked. So that's where I am right now. It's uh, mid-August. I should expect this to be done by sometime in October, I guess, because we're not actually starting until September. And uh, so for the first step here, we've got the, uh, the jack coming in on the butt of the guitar. So we're gonna start off with uh, leaving a, uh, 
uh, a square uh, point of entry with the, with the drill to be able to drill that out and set our depth. Then we can cut out, uh, cut that waste piece off and then route the outside profile of the guitar. So we've got another template that we're gonna to use to route the neck pocket. Once that neck pocket is in, then we can align the bridge, confirm the center line of the, uh, the neck on the body. And after that, then we can lay out our, our exact bridge uh, location. Just in case there's a little bit of error that might compound there, I wanna place the bridge after the neck pocket is cut. Flipping it over to the other side, I mean, we've got a couple of templates for control cavities. So that's going to be our control cavity itself. And then the cover, we'll do a secondary route for the cover. And then on the back side as well. So we've got the sweep cutout there for the upper access there. And then we'll thin that out with a, with another cutter. The uh, For the sweep cutout here. Um, and then we'll hand work that there and we have the, uh, the arm cut out there to do and, and that'll be the body done. Really. So off to finishing. All right. So some time has passed, uh, and it's almost time to finish the guitar, uh, the finishing that is the, the paint. And uh, I haven't included any pictures of the original guitar that show the color up until this point. Uh, I wanted it to kind of be a surprise. A lot of people, myself included for years, thought this guitar was black, solid black. It turns out it's actually a very dark, transparent purple. Um, when I learned this and when I saw some photos, uh, I went and went to like a website that had a color wheel and I made a couple samples. And I had a friend of mine send those to Joel and... Joel picked out the one that was closest, and he actually did it really, really quick. So uh, Joel picked out the color for the guitar, which is pretty cool. So if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, um, the guy who's painting it already did his first sample based on that sample I gave him, picked by Joel. And the sample is almost perfect. It's just uh, we're going to go a little bit darker. But uh, uh, let's go outside, and I'll show you the actual sample for now, and then we'll uh, paint the guitar. All right, so we have this uh, very nice mahogany guitar. And first what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the grain because we don't want that coming through the contour of it. So as you can see, it starts drying pretty quick. Oh wow. It just starts drying and basically all we have to do is when it's dry, we just gotta go over it with the sand, with 400 grit sandpaper just to break off whatever is on the face of the guitar, mm -hmm. and it's gonna leave all the filler inside the grain. So there is a tiny amount of the purple in there, you're saying? Yeah, there's oh, wow. like a tiny, tiny bit of red to make it to make it purple, and you'll see it after after I wipe this off. So all that does is it just it just adds a little bit of color to it, and then we just wipe it right off. Okay. So coats of clear with a color in it with the blackish mostly black tiny bit of purple in it and uh, we're going to start building the color on this thing and it's going to take quite a bit of coats to get it to where we want it so that's where we're going to start at when it starts going flatter the more you put on there like because i'm going to work this down a little bit and right. then it's going to come out and it's going to be less green and then you work it out and then you go oh, less green the more you put on Looks, looks absolutely amazing. That's not even clear coat. The clear coat's gonna bring out a lot. Oh, 
All right, we've all waited long enough for this. It's done. Um, I had it for a couple days so far. Um, the luthier ended up shimming the nut, which allowed uh, the neck to be a little more straight and I allowed the action to come down because I was under the impression for a minute that I liked uh, higher action and relief in the neck and it turns out my nut was just too low. So what that means is this is the best feeling and best intonating guitar I've ever played. Um, and as you know, the neck is a genuine comparison neck. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. This thing's amazing. It's so fun to play this thing and uh, turned out better than I think uh, anybody really hoped for. Um, so anyways, here's some really nice footage from earlier in the day in uh, varying light sources from different angles. And uh, in the background, I'm going to play some, some Kill Switch Engage. All right. The self To uh, show you this, I know you've already kind of made comments on it because Chris showed you. Uh, yeah, yeah, some it's pictures, turned out great, man. Turned out great. Thank you. That's the amazing. only thing we uh, didn't. Uh, the only things that are not like to actual your original spec, and this is like minor. Um, we didn't route out a a route for a cover because we weren't going to put one on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the tuners are different. They're not the Schaller M6. I don't know if you can see that. They're yep. uh, hip shots and um, yep. hip shots. The hip shots are great. Think, though. 
Yeah, I, I think yeah. these these ones are uh, unfortunately the ones I actually put on are a high or is it a low a low gear ratio? So you kind of breathe on them and it and it moves, but they're yeah. great and and I haven't had any weird uh, issues. But uh, yeah, what else is it? Oh, I was gonna ask you. Um, so I was looking at pictures of um, the pictures Graham sent me of your guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the one thing I noticed, and it didn't, I didn't notice it until the guitar was built, but it seems like the block in your trim is bigger than this Wilkinson one. Do you recall if you upgraded that at some point? Um, I, I can't remember if the bridge was actually upgraded. Like I see that you've done it on yours. I know uh, the only thing I did personally was I changed out the saddles to the Wilkinson. Uh, yeah, it was the, the um, what are they? Graph tech saddles. Is that what you have? Yeah, that's, that's what I actually did. Yeah. See, there was actually a debate. I was talking to Graham about it. Mm -hmm. And we, we didn't know. And, uh, but I thought I remember, I remembered seeing an interview with you way back in the day before I was even a fan. Like I found it after the fact and you mentioned you were having string breakage issues. So I assumed you put string savers by graph tech, but Graham mm -hmm. thought you had a spare black Wilkinson laying around and you used those. So me and him were like, we didn't know what was what, but I was like, I'm going to put string savers on. They're cool. Yeah, they were the string oh. savers for sure. Oh, okay. And uh, I think I, I there, something, I think my, my tech at the time may have like shimmed the nut or no, I'm sorry, shimmed the neck a little bit. So I think I, I was having trouble getting the right string heights with the actual Wilkinson um, bridge saddle. So I ended up with the graph techs, you can shave them down to where you need them to be. So I think I, uh, that was one of the reasons I put those on there as well. No, it definitely made a difference in the tone too. It kind of warmed the guitar up a little bit. Interesting, Graph interesting. Decks. Yeah, and as far as the, the like the tremolo cavity, I can't remember. I think that was the original bridge that's still in it, and I, and I can't remember if Vitaro had carved it where. The, I think the tremolo only went down; it didn't go backwards. Because a lot of times you can, you can set up a Wilkinson to float. I think if you want. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure the way that he had cut the cavity, uh, it just went down, kind of like a strat. Yeah, I gotcha. I think that that's what I did with with this one, and it's mm -hmm. because I thought that's what you did with yours. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Wilkinson has started maybe sending out smaller actual blocks because I looked at the picture and yours did look thicker. But um, yeah, you could that's maybe they change the size with the years. Yeah, I uh, mean, yeah, as far as, our, as far as I remember, <laughs> man, I think that was the original bridge that that was still in the guitar when Graham got it. So okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, that turned out great, man. The color looks awesome too. Oh yeah, dude! Look, I got a light here set up. Uh, you've already seen some pictures, but it's just so cool to see it in person. It like changes in front of you. It's it's wild. I was really worried about the paint out of anything because I wanted this thing to be like, you know, basically a replica. And I was like, man, it's gonna be so hard to describe this color to somebody. And I got lucky. The guy who ended up painting it is a fan of your band. And he's like, oh, I have the, the live DVD. Is that the same guitar? I said, yeah. So look for the long haired dude. And that's the guitar. <laughs> <And> <laughs> right he literally, yeah, he literally watched it though the night before he painted it and showed up the next day. He's like, well, it looks fucking black. I was like, good. Now, you know, yeah. but um, I'll show you the. Oh yeah. See that. You got it, man. Yep. Wow. Yeah, definitely though, like, you can... Yep. From a distance, the original kind of had like a, it kind of looked black from a distance, but in the light, it had like a purple red kind of thing going on. Right. You know? Hmm. So it seems yeah. like yours is right on, man. It looks great. I, we, we appreciate it. We tried, uh, tried really hard and we worked on it for a, a long while. I, I was supposed to actually build this thing years ago. And then I think I got on like one of my first bigger tours and I just told the guy who I was going to build it with, I was like, I, I got to go on the road, but, uh, so I saw the back plate on yours. It said it was built in December of 2002. Do you remember receiving the guitar, your, maybe your first show with it or what your impressions were or anything like that? Yeah, I, I actually think, uh, if I remember correctly, it's Ataru brought the, we got the guitars in Japan. Adam had a similar one at the, at the same time. And, uh, we used them for the show in Japan. I was just blown away by how thick it sounded for a bolt on that guitar. And the only, the only thing I think I ended up changing initially, um, I had a tower put a bone nut on the original one, which had a okay. great tone, but I always find with the drop tuning, sometimes the bone nuts, you can get a little bit of string slippage, you know, behind it and stuff like that. 
Um, so as much as I like the tone, I think I pretty quickly ended up putting a graph tech or a tusk nut on the thing after that. But other, other than that, that's how it was for years and years. Um, but yeah, I, 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 that's a great guitar, man. Great guitar. Yeah. I don't even know what nuts on here. Cause this is just a stock. Uh, what, what do they use these days, Chris? Do you know the stock comparison ones? It should be tusk. tusk, tusk, tusk yeah. tech. I mean, that's just I got an a... FX WM neck. So yeah. it should be Tusk. That's the nice thing about the Tusk or the Graph Tech ones. They kind of just have that naturally as the strings go through them. I mean, they don't last as long as like a if you do like a bone or a brass nut, but at the same time, they stay in tune so good, man. So I've always had good luck with the Tusks. And, yeah. The guitar experienced like a pretty bad uh, incident with like an airline and that mm -hmm. it got lost and smashed. Yep. And I've seen the pictures actually. Yeah. Um, I'm curious because I know, I think you said to Chris that at one point it was refinished. Was the refinish a result of fixing the the, the break from the airline or just? Yeah, it, it wasn't actually a total refinish. Um, what happened? Yeah, like you said, that I, I forget what airline it was, but they lost the guitar for about a week on our way back from Europe. Whew. Finally got the call that they had found it. So I drove to Boston to pick it up and I don't, I don't know what they had stacked on top of it, but the whole, like the volume pot was pushed into the guitar. The whole cavity was cracked and everything. And uh, the, the neck was just way out of joint. Like the high string wasn't even over the fretboard anymore. So it was kind of a big mess. So I brought it to my tech in, uh, in Westfield at the time and he ended up just kind of drop filling the whole thing and getting it stable again. And I think he did another clear coat on top of it, but he just left, like he didn't actually do any color so you could still oh, see all gosh. the marks. You could see all the um, repair marks in it and all that. And um, I just said, you know, whatever, man. It's cool like that. It's got some battle scars. So we so we nice. left it how it was. Yeah. Um, so would that have been, because like, I think for most of, you know, Killswitch fans who know this guitar, or not this one, but the real one, um, our, like, most vivid memory is probably going to be the World of Blaze DVD. Mm -hmm. um, was that whole incident, all that stuff that happened to the guitar, was that after that or? It was after that, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. It's probably, let's see, maybe 2007 or eight that it had the big accident. The airline was that. Was that why you were playing the Angelus in 2007? Because this thing was just not able to be played. Is that kind of how that went down? Yeah, partially, partially. I got in the Angelus because gotcha. I think it was the soil work guys recommended the Angelus for um, recording. It's such a great sounding guitar, and. Um, but yeah, I had retired that one. The, the tech I brought it to at home couldn't have it fixed in time to bring it on the road. So I, I took the Angelus out instead and just got used to playing that. So I used yeah. that for years. Yeah. And then by the time I got the Dellinger back, I just kind of retired it because I figured it had been through enough, you know, and <laughs> that one stayed at home for a long time. Yeah. Um, let's see what else I got here for questions. I'm not going to keep you much longer, I promise, man. Oh, you're uh, good, brother. No worries, man. Thank you. Uh... Oh, um, is there a story um, with the whole EMG 85 thing? I know a lot of people back then fixated on the fact that certain bands and guitar players weren't using an 81 because that was basically the only way. It was not very common for people to uh, to put an 85 in the bridge. Was that Did that start mm -hmm. off as a mistake or something? Someone just threw it in or a nod to soil work or... Uh, not necessarily. I, I, I remember Peter using an 85 in the bridge and, and really liking the, the sound of his guitar. And he, he was he was the guy who kind of turned me on to the uh, comparisons in the first place, which is when we were on the tour with Soil Work back, I think it was 2001 or two. Um, but yeah, I always liked the 81 in the bridge, but it definitely sounds a little bit more scooped. And uh, Adam mm -hmm. and I were always kind of fanatics about mid-range and guitar tone. Um, and we just thought that the 85 had a little bit more you know, kind of fullness in the lower mids. Um, so we went back and forth between the two pickups a bunch of times, try to decide what we liked better. And I think certain guitars, like uh, Adam had an Angelus that really liked the 85 in the bridge. Or, I'm sorry, the 81. And then some of the uh, Dellinger guitars were, we thought sounded a little bit thicker with the 85s and just tends to record a little bit better. You know, you track a guitar in the studio and something about the 85, it just kind of, the tone like filled the speakers a little bit more. Yeah. And we started kind of sticking with the 85 in the bridge fell in love with that it's a great pickup nice. i mean so is the 81 you can't go wrong either way but really just a matter of taste i think and pairing yeah. with, and pairing with your guitar you know if you want a more of a percussive scooped out sound 81 is the way to go if you like that thick lower mid 
thing than the 85 to win, you know? I don't want to keep you guys too much here, but thank you uh, for for hanging out and talking about the guitar and some other things. Yeah, and, man, uh, that's a pleasure, man. That's uh, that's really cool you did that, man. It turned out great. Thank you. It turned out oh, great. I appreciate you you picked out the color. Like, like that's hey. like a whole <laughs> part of the video. Like, that's amazing. Right on, brother. Right on.